Folks, welcome back to the Jimmy O Show. We're here with the Tulsa Player of the Weeks. Uh, we got several guys. We, we actually have a four, a four count here uh, with some of our guys, a mixture of offensive special teams guys, and we'll have another segment with three more fellows coming at you. Um, before we get started, though, let me be sure to point out our charity partner this week. Uh, we're, we're promoting Ryan's Give, Giving Tree, uh, doing great work feeding the homeless in the cities. Lots of our guys have helped out. That's actually started by a former Tulane athlete. Sandy Ryan, basketball, men's basketball player. Uh, just wonderful stuff he's doing. And then, of course, please be sure to check out our website, fpwcollective.com. Find out about our collective and how you can help out our great Tulane student athletes. Gentlemen, well, let me introduce them first of all. The, who we're here with, we got Alex Bowman, uh, number 87 in your program. He's vying for the host job, so otherwise <laughs> I would say number one in your heart, but I can't. You know, you're trying to take my microphone. I got Bryce Bohannon. Uh, Shedra Lewis, missed 100 yards over there. And then, of course, the other missed 100 yards. He makes it a habit, Makai Hughes. How we doing, guys? Doing good. 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 <laughs> Man, look, you know, uh, winning's hard, right? You know, and uh, we saw that again this week. You know, Tulsa comes in. Tulsa had been struggling on the year, but they had something special for us. And, look, I mean, mostly offensive guys right here. It was a bit of a grind. Yeah, yeah. Um. You know, I, I Coach Fritz talked to a group, a uh, small group yesterday, and he he kind of pointed out he actually pulled up his manual, and he pointed to the uh, next man up policy that is written in the manual. And I guess no other week really embodied that more than this one this year as an offensive unit, right? Yeah. Um, so so Bryce, I mean, you know, one of the big beneficiaries. You know, you've been playing throughout the season, but all of a sudden you were on the field pretty much every play of that ball game, led the team in receptions and yards, right? So I guess you you just always took that to heart. That like, look, next man up when my opportunity comes, I got to do my job. Yeah, I mean, I really did take that to heart, like you said. I mean, um, it's always a next up mentality. Uh, for it's always implied, like emphasize that with us. So I mean, every week I got to come to practice. Just if I get that opportunity and it comes my way, I got to make that play. Right, no doubt. And 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 all of a sudden, you know, Alex, you know, you you're, you're missing four, five, and six out there for most of the game. Uh, you know, as a, as I guess, you know, one of the more seasoned pass catchers, you, you saw a little bit more action, a little bit more volume with the nice, what it was a, a, a wheel, yeah, slot fade type of thing mm -hmm. on the touchdown. Yeah, it was nice. Um, you know, like you said, the next man up mentality, uh, going through injuries, like Bo said, you know, we just have, you know, we have that depth that we can rely on that next person like Bo to show up and play their game. Right. I'm going to tell you all right now, like when, when, when Coach Fritz first showed up, <laughs> we didn't have that. Like, if we would have had the injuries like we had in that game, like, you know, you could have kissed it goodnight because we, we just didn't have guys like Bo and, and uh, you know, Shedro step up like he did in the backfield. And, you know, I mean, Luke Besh was out there. I mean, we had a bunch of different guys. Dante Fleming's a, a great player, you know, got a lot of run out there. And, of course, we'll we'll talk to Trey Tuggle in a little bit. I mean, Trey was looked like he's been a 30-game starter the way he played. You know, it's just – it really is impressive in terms of uh, depth, but like to give y'all credit, like I mean, it's the buy-in, right? Because it's easy, it's easy to sulk and like you're not getting the opportunity you want, but to actually buy and be part of the program and be the guys willing to, you know, to to wait till your numbers call and then step up, y'all do it. Nobody exemplifies that more than Makai Hughes. I know Makai missed almost all of last year, right, with injury, and then uh, you know came in the fall camp, nothing was guaranteed. You know, you had to work your way through the. Through the depth chart, and now we're what six hundred yard games in a row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a that was a tough one, man. You had to put some work in. It wasn't a it wasn't a lot of these easy five and six yard gains there. I, I thought Tulsa did a pretty good job with numbers and and with some of the things they were doing to make it tough. And 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 it was sl tough sledding at times, so, but but you just stuck with it. Yeah, uh, like I said, the O line they opened up the holes too, as we already know. The guys were working hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the receiver was hard as well too, and um, I can't. I would have a thousand yards without them. Without, them, without my teammates, you know, the big guys and receivers that work so hard, like each and every practice. Yeah, you know, and, and I always like to say, you know, the offensive lineman didn't get you that first five, but you know, you need the receivers to get the big, the big twenties, and uh, we saw that, you know. So it's good to see those guys doing that work to get you downfield. But but we got to talk about it because. You know, when that play call goes, I understand we put a flounder call on the back of a run. And and, and first of all, tell the people at home, what's, what's the flounder call? It's, it's like straight down the clock, you know. Uh, you don't want your opponent to get the ball, you know, catch up. 
on yeah. those. So. so so basically you get the first down and you're in a situation where if we can just kneel it out, yeah. like you gotta go down instead of taking it to the house. Yeah. Now man, look, you've had a number of great runs this year, but I ain't never seen you in so much green space. <laughs> yeah. Did it hurt it hurt just a little? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hurt, man. No, look, the guy got news responsibility thirty one yards later. We got to the point where the clock was game's over. If he goes down, he went down like a champ and did that for the team. But it, it was, it was, a, it was a great run to seal the game and uh, and a great job by you to execute that. And of course, you know this game is defined by a lot of things. You know, and, and you know, I think Telus's effort, uh, their number eleven, particularly coming in and playing the way he did, was was eye opening. I thought their offensive line was good. It was a hard fought, tough game. This game doesn't go the way it needed to go if Mr. Zero right here, Cedro Lewis, doesn't do what he does coming out of the halftime. So just take us into that return, Cedro. You 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 got more. You probably got more kick return touchdowns than any active player in the NCAA. But you know you got to be up in the all time list. With, with now five now you got it. It would be five, but they caught one back. Oh, they caught one back. Okay. <laughs> so four four career touchdowns that count. This being your fourth, just. What did you see? You know, how, how did it break to you? And how did when did you know you were gone? Uh, throughout the week, we practiced. We practiced different sequences, different different phases. So, Coach, we went over it. Coach said that we would have an op. Like, I don't know when it would come, but I know I'd have, I'd have an op. So, coming in halftime, he was like, hey, this is going to be the one. And like you said, it's hard to win for a lot of games. You don't know what play or what sequence is going to change the game or could be the uh, the change of the game, so I, I was more more than happy to help the guys get some momentum and change the way things look. I absolutely did, man. I mean that that was the shot in the arms the team needed, and was ended up being the decisive points, and uh, just a great job on that return. And look, you know, uh, some 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 depth issues in the backfield as well. You know, we didn't see Duda, we didn't see uh, uh, Shoddy. You know, it was it was you and Makai, and y'all y'all carried the rock for. I mean, together y'all probably carried about 30, 35 times in the game. So. Great work all around. And then, you know, Alex, I kind of ended in this segment with you, man. You know, uh, just in the past few weeks, you know, uh, we're seeing more and more of 87 getting in the end zone. You know, what's sort of been the key to your success in terms of your your threat down there? And and uh, can we expect more of that, more of that as we go forward? Well, I'd say it's, uh, it's more about the play calling, you know, just executing what we've been given. Uh, everyone on the field has to do their 111 10. You know, on those particular plays, I'm the one that happens to be run the uh, run the route to catch the ball. So, you know, I'm just out there doing my 111th and doing what I can to help the team. Very good. And and so, you know, he told me before the show started he was gonna he was gonna start hosting the show. I, I look, he's better looking than me. He can run better. He can catch better. You know, unfortunately, he also is a better speaker too. So I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm after. Uh, I'm going to have to negotiate a no buyout clause in my, my contract to make sure that I, I get to keep hosting the Jimmy O Show. But, look, folks, that'll do it for this segment of Jimmy O Show. We've got to let these guys get off the class. All four of them have 12, 1230 classes because they uh, we're recording right at 12. So they're uh, students first and uh, do a great job representing the university. Thank you, gents. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So back to the next segment of the Jimmy O Show. We're here with more players of the week from Tulsa Game Week. Uh, we're here now with Trey Tuggle. Cam Podesclo and Keelan Harrison. How are we doing, gents? Oh, good. Very, good. Very good. Good. All right. Well, I said, you know, I said before we went on, Keelan's the fastest guy in this. Do you want to make a claim to that, uh, Trey? I can't make a claim to that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a native of Mississippi, though, right? Yes, sir. I know all about it. Me and Keelan actually played each other in high school. Oh, very good. Okay. For one. For one. Uh, <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that either. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Well, uh, Trey, you know, man, look, you've proven yourself to be a very valuable member of the offensive line, you know, playing guard, playing tackle. In this game, step right in, next man up, you know, and, and played every tackle, every snap and right tackle, did a good job. How did it feel out there to get that extended action? Of course, I'm glad to get my opportunity, and I appreciate all the coaches putting me in this opportunity and making me practice, continue working for my team, perform for my brothers. Yeah, very good. And, and, and talk just real quick. I'll follow up with you real quick. We'll go talk to the next guys. But the uh, Coach Rochauer, you know, Coach Dan, you know, what's it like having a, you know, long-time NFL guy now sort of being the guy you're learning from on the offensive line? Well, he's like an encyclopedia. He knows everything about the position. And any questions you have, he can answer it. 
sometimes it's hard to follow him. He may, he knows high, such high knowledge about everything, but he's a great coach to have. Yeah, very good. All right, Cam, man, look, you come out expecting one thing all week. You know, you, you watch film on these guys, and you know, you see number one, you see number seven at quarterback. You, you kind of, we I think we only seen one half out of eleven, and then we played this game, and eleven takes about ninety percent of the snaps. He was a little bit different skill set than the others. Um, yeah, so 11 was um, definitely a better passer than um, the two guys we had kind of studied before. And uh, he's a young guy, but he's a really good – he's really poised. I really liked how, how poised he was. He had a good control of the offense, so he gave them a little bit of su success. But Yeah. Um, um, and, you know, I thought also what he did at effect job was he, he, he was pretty good at getting the ball out on time. It makes it tougher on you, you know, when the, when the defensive line can't harass the quarterback because right. he's getting it out so fast. But um, – you know, uh, just what was sort of the key? You know, obviously um, they had some success, made the big, uh, the big uh, two point conversion stop, but uh, just sort of key success limiting them to to the twenty one or whatever they ended up with, so that we get the W. Yeah, so kind of just mix, mixing up things for him because he is a young quarterback, so it's kind of just trying to give him different looks, um, try to make things a little harder on him. He wanted to throw things fast, so he's trying to try to train up the coverage and. Um, but uh, it was a good job on us making adjustments as a defense to uh, make that big play on that two-point conversion. Yes, sir, no doubt. And uh, and Key over there, man, look, you know, you you you're gonna have like, uh, you know, I don't know, some sort of um, uh, shareholder rights or something <laughs> in this, this show. You've been on it so many times, like you know, you gotta start, you gotta up, increase your appearance speed. You know, you, it's he, he feeding the DBs on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thursday meeting, he feeding us. Uh, yeah. I mean. Just Mr. Special Teams has been the guy, you know, just as solid as they come all, you know, throughout his career. But he, it had to feel pretty good to uh, be part of that uh, schedule touchdown. Oh, yeah, most most definitely. And, you know, uh, schedule, he, he's a fast guy too. But, yeah, I mean, we like when the ball is in, in his his hands. Um, I mean, he has the ability to do that almost every play. So, I mean, that was nice, definitely. Yeah, you know, another big part of this game, something that you really didn't have to do, haven't had to do too much this year, is is actually cover punts. I mean, you know, up to this game, we we just, you know, I, if we punted more than three or four times in a game, I, I I don't remember it. And yet in this game, we had to punt quite a few times, and and yeah. there we were. Like, I don't know what the difference was between the gross and net, but it wasn't much because they didn't do much of anything in a return game. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think we had to cover like six punts uh, last game, but. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anytime I could go out there and force fair catches, I mean, it is a really big momentum shift because we we getting uh we we giving we getting the ball we giving them the ball uh with a longer field to go. So uh, that hitting yardage battle is something we look at every week. And uh, I mean, we didn't get that many ops on kickoff just because I mean, they they didn't return any kickoffs. So I mean, just special teams. I play in all the phases, so you never know which phase is going to be the one. Uh, to capitalize on, so I mean, I just try to play hard on all of them, and I mean, it just happened to be punt this this last week. Yeah, no doubt. Well, look, you know, I mean, but but we talk about it being hard to win football games, and and it's sort of this is just like a little microcosm or glimpse into it because because look at what we just talked about, you know, a guy Tug Tuggle found out on Thursday he would have to take every snap uh, at tackle, you know. Cam talked about having to come out and, and seeing a quarterback really hadn't seen much of a film. The key, you know, you're talking about having to cover more punts than we've covered all year. Um, you know, and and that's let's you you the best laid plans, you know, often go out of the windows. You gotta you gotta plan our strategy to win and and uh, inevitably to win football games, you gotta make a lot of adjustments on the fly. And I thought you guys did a, a fantastic job of that as a unit. Um you know, so so guys, just hats off to you, man. It, it is a special accomplishment being nine and one. You know, coming off a of twelve to twenty one out of twenty four games. I, I was thinking about it over the weekend. Um, you know, Coach Fritz, when Coach Fritz uh, went to three straight bowls, and, and Key and Trey, you were a part of the last one probably. Um, but you know, that was the, something that had never been done in two line history: three straight bowl appearances. We won twenty one games total in those three games, and here you are sitting uh, those three years. And here we are sitting at 21 wins in the last two years. We're not even finished year two yet. Mm -hmm. Now, don't stop. Okay. We, we don't want to stop at 21. Y'all got to go get four more. All right. So, but, but, but the only way we do that is one and oh, one at a time. Right. So, but hats off to you guys. You, 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 you know, it doesn't, it, does, it probably doesn't get said enough of, of how just an incredible accomplishment it's been. And, 
it's been real fun watching all of you uh, contribute to that success. Appreciate, it. Appreciate, appreciate it. you. Yeah, man. No doubt. No doubt. Well, folks, that'll do it with this episode of Jimmy O Show. Please be sure, once again, to check out Ryan's Giving Tree. Also check out ftwcollective.com to find out more about the collective. And look, folks, uh, another early kick. We're at noon Eastern, 11 Central in Boca Raton, Florida on uh, Saturday. I think that's an ESPN Plus, so, so make sure you got your, your login stuff right. <laughs> And catch that first time. I think all year we're not on uh, one of the linears, but that's all right. You know, we can put on the show, put in the show however we do it. But I'm coming. So Definitely. y'all make sure y'all see a good piece of chicken for me at that meal or whatever. Oh, no. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Weather should be nice. So, yeah. yeah. Fun, man. Well, uh, hopefully y'all are able to retain some of your tickets for extended relatives you got out there. I hear oh, Pratt's yeah. eating them all off. Y'all eating all the tickets. All right. Well, folks, that'll do it. I look forward to being with these guys in Florida, and uh, hopefully you look forward to watching them go get another victory to go 1-0 once more. Until next time, roll wave. Roll wave.